Okay, let's talk about using GoodNotes on the iPad. Uh, those of you who've been following me for a long time are probably pretty familiar, at least with the idea that I use GoodNotes on my iPad because that's how I started. And that's that was actually the beginning of me using Family Tree Notebooks pages as I created pages specifically because I wanted to start organizing my family history inside of the GoodNotes app. Now, this app is currently only available for Mac and Apple products. So that's iPhones, iPads, and Mac computers. They're working on a version, and I'm assuming it's gonna have to be pretty soon, but they're working on a version for, you know, Android or PC, it's just not out yet. So if you don't have an iPad and you have no intention of getting an iPad, then this is not going to be for you, but you can go ahead and, you know, watch, see if it calls to you. It really, I think it's the easiest way to fill out Family Tree Notebooks pages. Okay, so we're going to start with this idea that we've got this green Ancestor Profile PDF page and it's sitting on our desktop. And in this case, I am using a Mac computer. So I've got this page and what I'm going to want to do is I want to send it to my iPad and I specifically want to send it to the GoodNotes app on my iPad. So uh, if I, you know, right click, if I command click on this and open this menu, one of the options is going to be share. I'm going to choose to share and then airdrop this file. Now you don't have to do it this way. You can pull things from Google Drive or Dropbox. Um, you could email something to yourself. There's other ways that you could share. I just, I airdrop things all the time because it's very fast and easy. So I'm going to airdrop that and it's going to ask me, where do you want to send it? I'm going to select Carly Morgan's iPad. And then on my iPad, I want to make sure not only that I have the GoodNotes app open because that's uh, going to be really handy. I actually want to make sure that I have the notebook open that I want the page to go into because if I don't, it's just going to show up as a new page all on its own. So instead of uh, instead of just importing it to GoodNotes and having it be a new document, I'm going to actually open up this Read Family History book and then choose to import it uh, to that current document. So if you haven't done this before, you know, if you go to share something and then you realize that you didn't have the notebook open, you can just cancel the airdrop and then re-airdrop it once you have the notebook open and it's going to give you this option. So I'm selecting import to current document. And again, if any of that was confusing, just pause this video, go back a little bit and watch it again. Um, this is not complicated. It's just that there's different steps that you need to follow to get to this point. So now that I've selected import to current document, it's going to have this page pop right up. And that's what I'm going to be looking at inside of this read family history notebook. And from here we can, um, you know, start doing things to add text and to add photos and to customize this page for our family tree notebook. So if you look on the top of the uh, good notes window, you're going to see all these different tools. And some of these are things that you will use all the time. And some of these are things that you really aren't going to use that often. I'm not going to cover every single one of them. I'm just going to cover the major ones that you might um, run into. The one on the far left, it's not a very good picture, in my opinion, for explaining what it is. What that does is it sort of magnifies part of the page so that you can just see it better. And that's really handy uh, for handwriting, because when it magnifies that, and then you write inside of the, the box that opens, it makes your handwriting just a little bit cleaner. Um, the, the tool right next to it is the pen tool. That's the one that you can use um, with the Apple Pencil. I mean, I think you can also just draw with your finger, but I use an Apple Pencil and I handwrite things using that pen tool. Uh, right next to that is the eraser tool, and you can erase not only uh, things you've handwritten. You can also erase text that you've typed. Um, you can erase shapes. You can erase the highlighter. You can erase images, I believe. Uh, so you're probably going to use that, you know, fair amount. The highlighter tool. Again, I don't use that a ton with my family history, but I will use it occasionally to highlight parts of book pages or newspaper clippings if it's just going to be too much for somebody to scan and find the part that I'm talking about. And next to that, that's a shapes tool. Um, that, I am trying to think of when you would use that. When would that be handy? It, it's not just that it draws shapes. It's, it's like it, 
when you go to draw a line, it makes it a really straight line, or you go to draw a circle or a square, it turns it into like a perfect geometric shape instead of something that's hand drawn. Um, I use it a lot when I take notes for meetings or when I put notes together. I don't use it a lot for family history, to be honest. Maybe you've got a use for it that I'm not thinking of, but I don't think that one's going to come up very often. The lasso tool I do use a lot. That's where you can grab things to move them around. Uh, you can grab and select things to make them larger or smaller. And you're mostly probably going to use this to get your text to line up correctly on the page. That's what I use it all the time for. Next to that is the image tool. That's where you can um, take images off of your device and and put them into the page. So if you've got a photo or a scanned document or something like that, you're going to use the image tool to bring that in and put that on your page. The camera tool is if you actually want to just hold the camera of your device, you know, the camera of your iPad up and take a picture of something. I never use that because I never have a, an image that's not edited or some old scanned image that's coming into my um, notebook. But, you know, I suppose if you wanted to save yourself a step, you could just take a picture and put it directly into the notebook. I personally think that even if you're just out and about and you're taking pictures of headstones, or if you're taking pictures of property or taking pictures of a monument or something like that, I would take pictures with it, uh, you know, and actually take them with the camera for your device or the camera on your phone and then run them through a filter or two and then send them to your family tree notebook. But that's just me. Next to the the camera tool is the text tool. It's this little box with a T in it, and that will open up a text box, and that way you can type onto the page. Um, don't worry about the one that's right next to the text. You're just never going to need that. Up on top of that menu is a different menu. This is like a different Good Notes menu. The one that's the little four squares, that's going to show you the eagle eye view, so you can see all of the pages inside of your notebook at once. Um, that's really handy when you're jumping around trying to remember you know, which page or information from another page. Uh, and then skipping the ones in the middle, because again, you're not going to use them very often. That square at the end that has the arrow going up, that's how you're going to share and export your pages when you're done. So that's how you print them out, and it's how you turn them into PDF files and then save them to the files uh, on your computer. Um, and then way over on the other side, over towards the right-hand top corner, there's that page with a little like turned down corner and the plus sign you that's the easiest way to um add a new page to your notebook so you're going to probably use that relatively often okay so going back to that original thing that we looked at that first tool that opens up the sort of magnified box we're gonna have the pen selected and we're going to select that magnified box and that's gonna let us handwrite really precisely on part of the page and I can move that magnified box. You can see it down here at the bottom. I can move that box around depending on what part of the page I want magnified. And then I can write inside the magnified box and it lets me have more control over my handwriting. So here I've written John Brown. Um, you know, as an alternate, you can just type. In that case, you would open up a text box. You don't need the magnification if you're just doing a text box because you don't need to be quite as precise. Um, so just put the text box where you want it and then you can type out. Here I've typed out John Brown. And if it's not exactly lined up where I want it, you know, if it seems like it's a little bit low or just a little bit too far away or something like that, then I can use my lasso tool and lasso that and then I can move it to wherever I want. Uh, let's say that, okay, so I've done all the steps and I'm going to have added text to all those fields. You can see here in the sample, I've only put his name in, but let's say that I filled out this ancestor profile and now I want to add a picture. Choose that image tool and then it's going to ask you, you know, where do you want to bring in the picture from? This is just opening my uh, recent pictures here on the iPad. So I'm going to grab one of those and it puts the picture right there, but it's still highlighted and that's going to let me move it around and make it larger and smaller so you can make it fit the space uh, or you can put in a couple of pictures and move them around so that you can kind of create a collage there at the top of your page um and it's it's totally up to you you can crop the image down uh you can sometimes people make the images large enough that they actually cover up fields of text if you'd rather have the image than the text uh totally up to you Okay, let's say that I have all of the images and text on this page that I want to, and now I'm ready to just save the page. 
Now, inside of GoodNotes, the page is already part of this family tree notebook, so I don't necessarily have to save it to add it to the notebook. But I always save, every single time I have a page, not even completed, but it's just a page that I've added anything to, I save a copy of it to my ancestors' folders uh, on my computer. And to get a copy of this page, we're going to hit that that box that has the arrow going straight up and we're going to choose export this page and then that's going to give me an option to save it as a pdf file and we'll talk more about what you're going to be doing with all of those individual pdf files in a later video but hopefully that made sense i think i love the goodnotes app uh, i organize all sorts of things in it i think it's incredibly intuitive once you get going um, I just wish that it was available for everybody. I find it really frustrating that it's only available for Apple and Mac users, but that's how you use it. Okay, let's talk about using GoodNotes on the computer. So GoodNotes is a great program, great app, but unfortunately right now it's only available on the computer if you're using a Mac. Although they're working on a version that will work with PCs, it hasn't come out yet. So this is just going to be applicable if you're using a MacBook, an iMac, um, some kind of Mac computer. Okay, we're going to start with the Green Ancestor Profile PDF. It's already on our Mac. It's already sitting there right there on the desktop. Um, you don't have to keep it on the desktop, but we're not going to go into, you know, where to keep your files on your computer. Let's just assume that you know where your files are. For us right now, we're using this one page. It's sitting on the desktop. So we're going to open up GoodNotes. When we open up GoodNotes on the Mac, it looks like this. You can see that on this computer, this is my laptop. I don't actually use GoodNotes very often, so I don't have any of my family history things on here. But you can see that there are two notebooks that have been started. And if I need to, I can create another uh, another notebook. Um, I'm actually just going to go ahead and use the samples for FTN, which is the notebook that I use for training. So when I open that up, it looks like this. And you can see the most recent page that I've created. Now on the sidebar there, you're going to see there's this dotted line rectangle with a plus sign in the middle. That's what you hit if you want to add another page. There's another little thing up in the far right hand corner. There's a page with a plus sign on it. You can also add a page this way, but using this big rectangle on the left hand side is the easiest. And if you hit that, it's going to open up a window and it's going to ask you, or it's going to say, you know, how do you want to have a page? And you're going to say that you want to import a page. And then that's going to open up this window, which is the window that shows you what's on your computer. So I've got this window open. I'm going to go ahead and select that green ancestor profile PDF. And when I select it, it imports it into GoodNotes. And then you can see it's now part of the computer or I mean part of the notebook. So this is the easiest way to put a page into your notebook. Um, and I, this is the way that I, I bring pages into my notebooks most often. There is another way that you can take your pages and turn them into templates and then store them inside of GoodNotes. And I have a video about that if you're curious about that. I actually don't recommend that anymore. It's fine if you want to keep doing that. But what happened is when I first made that video and, you know, I had the pages on my GoodNotes and I was using them as templates, um, that was when there just weren't as many pages. And now there's thousands of pages. And so that would be a lot of templates that you don't necessarily always need to have in your GoodNotes. I find that it's just easier for me to import the pages one at a time from my computer or from Google Drive or from Dropbox or from somewhere like that than it is for me to actually have them all in there as templates. But if you're curious about that, you can look on my YouTube channel and find that video. Anyway, we have this page open. So now we can add photos and we can add text. So up in the left hand corner, well, all along that top edge, you can see that there are tools and we can go through those tools one at a time. Those tools all do different things up in the very left hand side. There's one that looks like a pen. And if you choose that, you can write on your page just the same way that if you're using GoodNotes on an iPad, you can write on it. I almost never write using my computer because I don't have a, um, a stylus and like a writing pad. I mean, I, I think I have one somewhere, somewhere in storage, but that's not something that I do 
um, on my Mac if I want to write something that I'm using my iPad. So here you can see I wrote in cursive using my mouse. It's messy. It's crazy. It wasn't fun for me to do. It's not something that I would do usually. But if you do have a, you know, a, a stylus and a writing tablet and something like that that you can plug into your computer, um, this might be an option for you. I always found that that was a little bit crazy just because you're drawing on one thing while keeping your eyes on something else. I was never able to get used to it. But again, that's personal preference. Um, so I personally, I like to use text and to actually type information in and the, the text tool is the little square that has the T in it. That's going to open up a little text box and then you can add text. Now the text box doesn't automatically align with any of the fields. It doesn't, you know, snap to, uh, any particular point, which I know people have been frustrated about because that means that you have to go back and um, move the text around to make sure it looks nice, but that's actually really not that hard. There's a tool that looks like a, a circle. It's the lasso tool. It's like an unfinished circle and it's made out of this dotted line. You use that to circle whatever it is that you wanna move. In this case, we're gonna circle the text that we just typed. And then it's really easy to just use your mouse and move that around so that it looks exactly how you want it to look. So that's, and it, it seems like, oh, that's a big pain. You get really used to it. You type, you grab, you straighten, you move on. Um, to add a photo, there is an image tool. It looks like a little mountain with a moon inside of a square. And that's going to open up uh, places that you can pull photos from. And it, because I'm on the Mac, it opened everything that was available through my iCloud. So here I've got the the photos that I keep in the iCloud for FTN. And I'm going to select one of those. And then it's going to put the photo on the page. And obviously I have the the option to make it larger or smaller and I can move it around from here. I don't have to just leave it where it landed. Something that I like to do when I've got these um, vertical, you know, these portrait photos that are taller rather than wider is I like to put the the photo in the, you know, the blank space that I have for photos and then take an enlargement, a part of the photo and put that right next to it. So I'm going to move the photo up and make it smaller, you know, small enough to fit in that space. And then I'm going to use the lasso tool and draw a circle to select the photo. And it's going to give me options. And I'm going to choose to copy the photo and then paste it. And you'll see that it, it creates a another image that's now the same exact size as the one that I just copied. But I can make that larger. And if I hit the, uh, if I sort of right click on the mouse or hit the command, is it command? I can't remember if it's command or control. While I click on that, it's going to open up this little menu that says, what do you want to do? Do you want to crop it? Do you want to share it? Do you want to add an element? And I'm going to want to crop it. When I select crop, it opens up the crop uh, tool window. And then I can just crop the image down and add that, you know, cropped down, rather zoomed in image next to this portrait image. And that sort of fills the space in and just... Um, I think it's a nice touch. It's sort of a nice way to show some creativity with this Ancestor profile page. Other tools you're going to want to be concerned about. There's a square at the top with an arrow that goes straight up. That is the share and export tool. That is going to be how you're going to get the pages out of GoodNotes and into your files or how you're going to print them. Um, make sure that if you're working on a notebook, but you only want to do it a page at a time, that when you're hitting that, you're choosing export this page, not export all. If I export it all, it would uh, export all 51 pages of this notebook. And, you know, with some of the family tree notebooks, you are going to have notebooks that are three to 400 to 500 pages long. Uh, so you don't want to accidentally export it every single time. If that's not what you're doing. Just pay attention to that. And yeah, I mean, there's other tools. Like I said, there's a highlighter tool. Um, the, uh, the eraser tool is right next to the pen. And there are some other tools, but I can't imagine that you would need to use those too much. Um, these are just the tools that are the most basic, but GoodNotes, if you have access to a Mac computer, GoodNotes on the Mac is so easy to use and so intuitive. It's my favorite program on my computer to use to create my pages, and I use it all the time.